Now will you notice, and when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. And I've dwelt on this before when we were in the gospel of Matthew, of how in that land that a storm will break up in those mountains that are around there. They're about 3,000 feet high. The Golan Heights are right above there that are in the news today. And so that storm will break then suddenly on the Sea of Galilee. And I tell you, this was a real storm. And we are told, so when they had rowed about 5 and 20 or 30 furlongs, that had put them out about halfway in the sea, by the way. They see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh to the ship, and they were afraid. Why? Well, because they didn't know. This is something they didn't recognize him at all. But he saith unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The same professor that I referred to that explained the miracle of feeding the 5,000 away, he explained this one away too. He says, well, you see, John says, immediately the ship was at the land. Actually, he said Jesus was walking on the shore, and they thought that he was walking on water. Well, the thing about this is that it's not what it says, that he was out about this distance, which would put him about halfway in the sea of Galilee. And then these critics don't seem to understand the language of love. Immediately the ship was at land. Why? Well, it was hard rowing that boat, and that storm was terrifying. But after Jesus got in the boat and the storm was quieted, it didn't take them long to get to the shore. That's the language of love, friends. And I'm afraid the critic doesn't know much about it.